Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's LT and this is Ugly Truck and we are so close to driving it under boost for the very first time and I'm so anxious, I'm so excited, I can't wait to hear that turbo spooling up with a big block behind it. I think it's going to be awesome and I'm half tempted to just say forget the rest of the work, let's just get out there and start tuning and start driving. But there's two important things that we really need to finish up first. One of them is a properly sized fuel pump and the second is functioning cooling fans. So that's what we're going to start on today. But first I wanted to show you guys just a couple of quick odds and ends that I finished up off camera. They really weren't that important or, or they weren't important enough I didn't think to show you the process of how I made them, but I figured it'd be worth mentioning and just kind of showing you guys a few things that I did take care of. And the first is a support bracket for the turbocharger manifold. Now, when I built the manifold, I left a little tab right there on the side of the wastegate branch. And remember, this thing is made from heavy wall pipe, so it's plenty strong. But I just made a bracket out of 316 steel and it bolts to the front of the cylinder head. I'm trying to get it to focus on it down there. There we go. Um, so that's the bracket right there. Bolts to the head in two different places, bolts to the manifold, and it just provides a little bit extra support because that big S480, it weighs like 50 pounds and it's kind of mounted off to the side. So it does have a lot of leverage against the manifold and that little bracket just will help it prevent, I don't know, cracking, hopefully. Uh, it just gives it a little extra support. Next thing I took care of is I added these T-bolt clamps on the silicone couplers. I know a lot of you guys were concerned that I actually forgot that you need them on a turbo system like this. Don't worry, I didn't forget about it, I just hadn't done it yet. And the very last thing that I installed was a boost reference line for the blow-off valve right here. I tapped in, if you can barely see my finger back there, I tapped in underneath the throttle body. It has to be behind the throttle plate for proper vacuum signal. And that just goes to the top of the blow-off valve right there. So. Uh, that's all the little details taken care of. Uh, basically, we're ready to run this engine under boost, minus, obviously, the fuel system and the cooling fans. And that is where we're going to get started. You can easily convert a 99 to 04 Silverado over to electric cooling fans using nothing more than factory parts from a 2005 and newer truck. And these fans here, they're actually from a 2009 Silverado. And even though it is the next platform up, the GMT 900, it still bolts into the GMT 800 trucks perfectly. And the reason why I chose that particular example is because it had the heavier duty cooling package. And I think one of the fans has nine or 11 blades on it. I can't remember what, um, but it'll move the most air of any factory cooling fan assembly. Now, if you do have a 99 to 04 truck, some of them did come with a 28 inch radiator and you need to install the wider 34 inch radiator to make this conversion work. Now the 28 inch radiator that ugly truck had originally bolted right here and that's now where the fan attaches but now the radiator attaches to this outer bolt right here and all the factory hardware is already there so it's a bolt-in conversion with zero fabrication or guesswork required now the only thing i haven't done yet is install the wiring harness to the fans and while there are a lot of aftermarket harnesses that'll do the job i always prefer to use a factory part whenever possible if they're available because usually the factory does a lot more r d and they make sure stuff fits just a little bit better you know it lasts a little bit longer and it looks oe which is something that i dig now i didn't actually have time to go to a junkyard and find a factory cooling fan harness but I did have a viewer reach out, his name is Nick, and he was willing to send me one of his extra electric factory cooling fan harnesses. So first of all, to say thank you, head on over to his channel. It's called Farmer Johnson Off-Road, and he's a fellow 8.1 enthusiast. He has a Yukon XL with an 8.1 and it's solid axle swapped and it is a really cool off-road rig. So to say thank you, head on over to Nick's channel, hit the subscribe button, and watch some of his videos. So here's everything that Nick sent me. Uh, not the monster, that was mine, but the cooling fan harness right here, this is from a factory 05 and up truck. So if you wanna to go to the junkyard and take one out, this is what you've gotta grab. You've got the fuse block slash relay center, whatever you wanna call it. This actually will clip onto the side of the factory fuse block that's under the hood of the truck already. Now it does take a different fuse block cover. Nick also sent me one of these. It's got the little cutout right there on the side to access the electric fan uh, relays and stuff like that. So we've got the main brain right here. This is the relays and the fuses. It'll keep everything protected. We've got the two connectors for the fans. He labeled them driver and passenger. And again, this is factory stuff. So it's got really, really heavy gauge wire. Um, it's got an even heavier gauge single power feed. This goes again onto the factory location of the fuse block. There's a connector right here and this on the other side of the connector 
are the ECN pins. And I'll show you guys how to wire that in. And finally, a ground. So overall, it's a pretty simple installation and everything is factory and everything is gonna fit exactly like it should. So let's get started. Everything's mounted up and I have all the wiring routed in exactly the same position as it would have been if it came that way from the factory, based on what I can tell from other videos and things that I've seen. So here's a quick rundown of where everything goes. The new fan relay center right here clicks onto the back of the stock fuse panel. There's just a little mount right there um, and it just kind of clicks into place. There's no hardware needed or anything like that. The main branch of the harness just kind of passes straight underneath the fuse block. And then to get the fuse block out, there's three little quick release tabs, uh, one right here, one here, and one on the back. You just kind of pull those back and the whole fuse block can pivot up, allowing you to run the harness underneath. The harness comes right out here. There's one connection here that's on the little harness that goes to the computer. And the other branch of the harness right there runs down and it runs underneath or between the stock computer mount. So I did have to take that out of the way temporarily. And then it runs right down along there, just kind of underneath the radiator. And it comes up in the center of the two fans and it splits off one for each side. Now, the other two things you have to connect is there's a power feed right here, and this goes basically to the battery. And then I ran the main ground right here on the engine block. Uh, that'll give a good solid ground connection. and Everything should work properly. Now, the very last two connections I need to make are these guys right here, and those need to get plugged into the stock computer. But before I do that, I just want to throw the battery back into place, get the computer or the computer bracket back into place. And I'll just do a quick function test to make sure the fans are working and to make sure the relays are doing everything that they should. And then once I know everything's working, then I'll just plug it into the harness for the computer and then I can handle the tune at some point.
If you've never attempted to repin a computer, it can seem a little bit intimidating at first, but honestly, it's no more difficult than just plugging the blender into the wall. The only trick is you just have to know which socket or which pin location to plug into because on each connector there are 80 different pins to choose from and there are two connectors on the early Gen 3 PCMs. But luckily there are small numbers that are cast into the back of the connector so everything's labeled and as long as you know which pin you're supposed to connect where, you'll be fine. Now to access the plug there are two bolts that are 7 millimeters and you just unscrew them and the connector comes out of the side of the computer. Then you've got to undo the little protective cover on the back and that just takes like a small flat blade screwdriver and you just kind of work these little pins or little clips, there's like six on each side. And so once you get that off you've got to get the little uh, wire lock or the pin lock out, that's this colored piece of plastic on the front. And to do that I just take a small pointy pick or something and there's just a little spot, one on each end, and you can just pry that connector out. And once you get it out you have access to the pins. There's two different wires that we're going to have to connect up. There's a blue and a green. The green one is what controls both fans on at low speed, and that's kind of your primary cooling fan. So whenever the engine gets up to temperature, maybe you're sitting in traffic, the computer will ground that one green pin, and that's going to be in position number 42 on the blue connector. That'll get a ground, both fans come on, engine temperature should come down. Now, if you want your AC to function properly on a 99 to 02 truck, it is going to require a couple additional steps because the computer doesn't know what the pressure is on the AC system. Now on 03 to 04 trucks, they'll function exactly like the 05 and newer trucks did, and so all you've got to do is plug that second blue wire into the green or the red connector, uh, mine's red, but some are green, and that'll be in position number 33. Now, like I said, if you want to keep AC on the 99 to 02 trucks, it does require one additional step. But if you're like me, if you don't have air conditioning, then all you've got to do is, is the same thing. Plug to that 33rd pin on the red or the green connector, and it'll function, except for the AC, it'll function just like a factory truck. So whenever the coolant temperature, let's say you're towing something really, really heavy at a slow speed on a hot day, um, and the temperature exceeds the first threshold and then exceeds the second threshold, well then both fans will come on high speed when that second blue wire hits the ground. Now as far as AC goes, I really wanted to keep it, but when I designed the manifold there was just no way to keep the stock AC pump location. And then when I installed the electric cooling fans and built the charge pipe, well that took up just about all the space between the core support here and the engine block. And the serpentine belt you can kind of see it right there, it goes sort of at that level right there and it takes up about the last little third of the charge pipe down there. So basically that's just to say there's no way to mount the AC in its stock, or not a stock, but an aftermarket bracket kind of would put it right up there. Now I've already made most of the changes in the calibration file to enable the electric fans to work properly, but I just wanted to show you guys real quick the changes that I made, so if you want to attempt this on your own, you can do just that. The first thing that we're going to do is come over here to the uh, system tab and come over to AC, and this thing right here, recirculation fitted, we want to switch that from AC recirc, which is where it was, to fan number two, and that'll change that pin number 33 on the red connector to operate the second stage of the cooling fan. The next thing that we're going to have to do is tell the truck that we actually have two cooling fans, and that's this one right here. It says fan type. Uh, if you have mechanical fans, it'll say no fan, but we'll just grab that and switch to two fans. And then from there, it's just a matter of setting the temperatures for the fans to come on and off when you want them to. Now, right now they're set at about 198 degrees to come on and 194 to go off, but I want to do a quick function test before I permanently keep this on there. So what I'm going to do is lower the on temperature to something really low, something like 100. And that way whenever the truck starts up it'll quickly get to 100 degrees and the fans will come on just so I know everything's working properly. And then to test the second stage I'll do something similar, fan 2 second stage right here. Instead of 215 let's have that come on at like, I don't know, 110 again just so the truck will warm up very quickly to the 100 and 110 degrees and we can do a function test. So I'll get this thing flashed onto the truck and we'll do a quick function test, start up, make sure they work and then I'll put it at the proper temperature which is kind of where I had it like 198 and about 215.
So I'm not sure if you guys can hear that sound or not, but that high pitched whining means both fans are kicking on in high gear. I've had the truck running just for a few minutes now. I've got the scanner hooked up and right now we are at 126 degrees. You can kind of see it right there in the middle of the screen. Um, both fans are working, so I'm happy. Everything's doing exactly what it should. Now I want to say thank you guys for watching. I honestly appreciate each and every one of you. Now we did have a goal to reach 30,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. We didn't quite make it, but right now we are only eight days at the time of taping this into 2021 and we're like at 29,500 subscribers. So we're 500 away. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and like this video if you appreciate what you saw today. Now, the next time you guys see this truck, we're gonna be putting in the bigger fuel pump. I've got a Walbro 450. And after that, then we're gonna start tuning and get this truck on the road, get it under boost, start doing some burnout. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss it.